Hello, my name is Katra Michielsens and I'm a quantitative fishery scientist at the Pacific Salmon Commission. Today I will provide a brief introduction to the use of Bayesian statistics for the estimation of the number of returning sockeye in the Fraser River. This presentation will provide you with the information needed to understand the general concept and see the advantages of using Bayesian methods over more conventional estimation methods. When using any estimation method, we would like our results to be correct. Now anyone that understands estimating fish stocks can tell you that it's impossible for any statistical method to estimate the correct number. Some methods, however, might bring us closer to the correct number than others. And that is what we try to do with use of Bayesian statistics, improve our odds of being correct. Now in order to illustrate how Bayesian methods work, I'm going to use an example from the world of ice hockey. At the end of the regular ice hockey season, the top 16 teams will qualify for the Stanley Cup playoffs. This is an elimination tournament to determine who will advance to the Stanley Cup final and win the Stanley Cup. It is a much anticipated event for ice hockey fans and therefore people are keen to predict who will win the cup and what are the chances of their favorite team to win. In order to answer those questions, it's important to find an optimal strategy to increase your chances of being correct. So how would you do that in case of the Stanley Cup? For one, you can start by asking yourself what prior knowledge or information you have to predict who will win. This prior knowledge might be the player or team statistics from the regular season. Once the playoffs start, you may revise those predictions based on the in-season game results. By integrating the in-season information with your prior knowledge, you may have a better chance of predicting the chance of your favorite team winning the cup. Now, how does this relate to the estimation of the number of sockeye that will return to the Fraser River? Similarly, you will have a pre-season forecast of the run size, and this prior information can be combined with in-season observations relating to daily abundances to estimate the run size. So what constitutes prior knowledge or information? Prior knowledge on the players, the coach and the team can come from many different sources. You can have information of how the players and the team have been performing previous seasons or during the regular season before the playoffs. And you can find out the track record of the coach. You can look into the sports literature and consult the sports pages or look up injury reports. You might even want to consult the tabloids as players who spend the night before an important game brawling in bars might not be playing to the best of their ability. Or you might want to consult some of the experts such as sport commentators or sports fans who may have insider information that you would not be able to get anywhere else but that would impact your ability to correctly assess the team's chances. However, when relying on expert knowledge, be sure to evaluate the reliability and quality of the expert information. For Fraser River sockeye salmon, our prior knowledge consists of information from previous salmon seasons. This can be in the form of the preseason forecast, whereby the historic relationship between the number of spawners and the number of recruits I used to predict this year's forecast. Our prior information can be obtained directly from historic run size estimates. For example, if historically the run size for a particular stock has never exceeded 100 million sockeye, it's unlikely that the run size would be as large in the coming year. Prior knowledge can also be obtained from literature. Information from the State of the Oceans reports, for example, can be used to adjust the information based on the number of spawners four years ago by accounting for the environmental conditions encountered by their offspring. Also, journal articles and project reports may contain important prior information, such as estimates of the likely production capacity of the river. And finally, you could rely on expert judgment or opinions, which can come from scientists, for example, when they have important information that has not yet made its way into the literature, or from fishermen who have a lot of experience with the salmon resource, but whose knowledge may not always be captured in the literature. Here we have represented our prior knowledge of the run size for sockeye salmon in a graph. The distribution indicates that it's unlikely that the run size will be larger than 100 million or smaller than 1 million. Most likely the run size would be around 15 million. Now in season we could rely on additional data collected to update that knowledge. 
So what type of information do we have in season to update our prior knowledge? In our example of the Stanley Cup, we have game-by-game -game reports on how the different teams are doing in the playoffs. For Fraser River Sockeye Salmon, our in-season information on the run size consists of test fishery data and hydroacoustics data collected at mission. By updating the prior with the newly collected information, we can update our knowledge and answer some of the questions we are interested in. For example, who will win the Stanley Cup and what is the probability that our favorite team will win? Or how many sockeye will return and what is the chance that the run size will be less than 5 million or more than 20 million? Moving back to our earlier graphical example. Using the in-season information, it is possible to update the prior probability distribution of the run size using in-season data. At the start of the season, as more sockeye migrate to the test fishery and pass the hydroacoustic site at mission, the additional information is bound to tell us something about the minimum run size. In this case, the data collected indicates that it's unlikely the run size will be smaller than 5 million. As the season progresses, we can expect to also learn more about the maximum run size. As a result, the upper range of the posterior probability distribution is updated to indicate that it's unlikely the run size will be larger than 15 million and most likely around 10 million. In the beginning of the season, priors are very important as there is still little in-season information on the run size. At the end of the season, the data overrules the priors and when given sufficient data, the results should be no different than when using non-Bayesian models. Let's now look a little closer at all the information that is used to estimate daily abundance and associated run size for Fraser River sockeye salmon. Prior to the season, we have preseason forecast on run size and run timing. The preseason run size forecast is obtained through stock recruit models based on the historic stock recruit data. These stock recruit predictions can be adjusted based on additional information, such as the current productivity of the stocks, depending on the state of the ocean. Similarly, the run timing forecast can be obtained from the historic data as well as from ocean temperature or currents. The preseason forecast on run size and timing allow predicting the daily marine abundance. This model prediction can be compared against the actual daily abundance of the returning salmon. Unfortunately, we do not have any directly observed data for this comparison. Instead, we have catch per unit effort data from the test fishery, which combined with a catchability estimate allows us to estimate the daily marine abundance in season. The prior for the catchability coefficient is obtained from historic data. In addition to the catch per unit effort data, the model of the daily marine abundance can also be fitted to daily river abundances obtained at mission once catches between the marine areas and mission are taken into account. The mission data, however, is not as timely as the marine data, as it takes about six days for the sockeye salmon to migrate from the marine area to the river. So even though the quality of the hydroacoustics data collected at mission is greater, the abundance estimates derived from catch per unit effort data of the marine test fisheries provide more timely information for in-season run size estimation and fisheries management. With this I conclude this brief presentation, which is intended to provide a very general background to the Bayesian methods used to estimate the number of Fraser River sockeye. For more information, please visit the PSC website or contact us directly at info at psc.org.